This is a practice exercise from page 148 in the textbook. We're really going to be combining everything we've learned about doing calculations with molarity, with stoichiometry, with molecular weights, and then percent compositions in order to solve this problem. And the way they've written this problem, they've broken it out into four individual calculations, all leading toward a final goal of figuring out the percent of iron in the sample. So we've got the sample of iron ore, we dissolve it in acid, all of our iron is now the iron 2 positive ion, then we're going to do an oxidation reduction reaction or a redox reaction, and they're giving us that balanced reaction. So first part asks how many moles of MnO4- were added to the solution. So if we look at the information given in the problem, we are given a volume, we're given a concentration, and then they're asking us to solve for moles. So we should remember that molarity is equal to moles over liters, and since we've got two pieces of information, we know the volume, we know the concentration, it should be very easy to solve for moles. So the way I do it, I like to use molarity as a conversion factor. There's a few different ways to solve this problem. Any way is fine, just make sure you explain your work. So you've got 0 0.04720 liters. I just converted my milliliters into liters. I know that there are 0 0.02240 moles in every liter. And I got that from the concentration, which means that I'm looking at 0, 0.01057 moles. And it may be easier to write that in scientific notation. Okay, so that's the answer for the first part. We have used a concentration and a volume to figure out moles of one of our reactants. Now they're asking us about moles of iron. So we should see that this balanced reaction here gives us the stoichiometric or mole relationships between these two substances. So if we just write out that we start with 1.057 times 10 to the negative third moles of MnO4 minus, and we know that we consume five moles of the iron two plus cation. For every mole of this substance, we get 0 0.005286 moles. And again, scientific notation may be easier here And you should notice that I'm using four significant figures for each of these answers, and I'm using four significant figures because that's how many I have in both of the original pieces of information. Okay, so so far I've done calculations with molarity, I've done calculations stoichiometrically using mole ratios. The next thing they're asking me is how many grams are in the sample. Conversions between grams and moles should be pretty easy at this point. In order to convert between grams and moles, we need the molecular weight or the molar mass. And since they're just asking us about iron, we don't really need to do anything to find it except look in the periodic table. So we're going to start with our 5.286 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of the iron ion. Now if you look in the periodic table, you're going to find masses for neutral atoms, which is fine because Remember that the electrons don't really contribute to the mass, not in any meaningful way. We just talk about the protons and the neutrons contributing to the mass. So when we use the mass, it doesn't matter that this is the mass of the neutral atom. And then we can do that calculation and we'll see that we have 0 0.2950 grams of iron because remember that all of the ion that was part of the reaction came from the original iron that was in the sample. The last thing they want us to do, here's our percent composition idea. So we know that the whole sample had a mass of 0 0.8890 grams, and they want to know what percent of iron was in the sample. This is very much like a mass percent that you were doing before for substances. In this case, remember that the mass percent is equal to the mass of the part that we care about over the mass of the whole thing times 100 because it's a percentage. 
So we know that the part that we care about is the iron. So we've got 0 0.2950 grams of just iron. We know that the whole sample was 0 0.8890 grams. Multiply that by 100 and we end up with 33.18% iron in that sample. Again, four significant figures. So what we did here in this problem is we took something where I maybe could have just asked you what's the percent of iron in the sample, and we broke it down into the four individual steps in order to figure out the answer to that. Now you should be able to put all these steps together into one big calculation, because on a test I might not ask them as individual steps. But again, every time you perform a calculation, you should be thinking about why am I performing it, where am I going to get the information I need to do the conversions, and make sure you have a plan started before you multiply your numbers together.